Okay, today I'm here in the laboratory and this is my seed shelf and I have a bunch of seeds here and it's early uh, January uh, 2022 and I just want to share with you some of the organization that I've done throughout December. I wanted to figure out what seeds to plant for the year and to decide on our major crops for this year. We have a goal to feed ourselves as much as we can from our own ranch here. Uh, without going to the grocery store, we want to feed ourselves. We're trying to produce a superior health food product. That doesn't mean that we're not going to supplement with other things as we need them. So figure out your why. Why are you going to grow food? So what am I actually doing this year? I'm going to farm to grow the staples this year. Last year was exploration. What varieties will grow? So I had seeds for 300 varieties. I grew about half of those. I grew about 150 varieties. This year I pared it down to the staples. And I have a chart right here. I know you can't see it in the camera, but it's right here. I pasted it onto this little cabinet where I keep my seeds. And this is my 2022 crop plan. And I'm just going to read it to you. Potatoes, carrots, green beans, melons, beets, herbs, sunflowers, corn, sugar beets, alfalfa, strawberries, garlic, squash, tomatoes, and peppers. That's what I'm growing this year. There could be something else I'm growing that's not on this list. Um, was lettuce on here? I don't think it was. Um, the salad foods were not on here. But the salad foods include, and that's on this page here, but these are the staple crops that I just read you. Those are the staple crops that we plant in the spring, we grow them through the summer, we harvest in the fall. Those are our big crops and we store those. Some of those things we grow in the wallapini year round, like carrots. Although we could grow those outside. Um, I have had okay harvests outside, not great harvests, so I thought this year I don't even think I'm going to plant them outside because they struggle outside. There are squirrels and there are deer and the, uh, the big problems with growing carrots outside. So I'm just going to grow them in the greenhouse. So that's my plan. That's something I learned, so I'm, I'm going to do that this year. Three days before the full moon, I plant the salad crops. And so those are right here. And this says bed six. I'm gonna grow all the salad foods in bed six. What are the salad foods? They're all right here, but I'm just gonna read it to you. I, I just named them salad foods because I had to name them something. But it is um, the lettuce mixes, radish, spinach, cilantro, green onions, tot soy, pak choy, beets, and carrots. So those are the things that we are planting once a month and then we're harvesting continually, every day of the week, every, once a week, however often we go out there that we need food. And that's feeding everybody who lives here on the ranch. And these are the seeds for those. And we plant those in the plug trays, and we plant them in the little paper pots sometimes um, to go directly in the ground. And most of these are started in the little green propagation house, in the greenhouse and then we transplant them out in the wall of peony. And I'm doing most of that in bed six um, for this year. There's some scattered in other beds, but those will be harvested strategically, and then entire crops will be filling those beds. So I made a calendar on this chart. Underneath this chart of my staple crops, I have a map right here with dates on it of when I grow what I'm going to grow. So in that Wallapini greenhouse, I have six long beds. Bed number one right now is planted to strawberries and garlic. And there's a little spot where there is some Claytonia that came up volunteer. And that's okay. Well, we will eat that throughout the winter. And then it should go dormant about the time the strawberries take off. And if not, I may have to cut it low, but we'll just see when that happens. Bed number two is where our cover crop is right now. It's the cover crop of uh, the uh, daikon radishes, the um, winter rye, and the hairy vetch. And so most of that is that cover crop. There's a few other things in that bed, but that entire bed is going to be the brassica family. And instead of growing 10 or 15 brassicas, I'm growing four simple brassicas this year. 
I have a couple of varieties of different ones, but I'm going to have kale because we eat that and we like it and it's very nutritious. We're going to have broccoli, two or three different varieties. We're going to have cauliflower and we're going to have cabbage. And we will have two or three varieties of each of those. And that will be in bed too. And during the summer when the cabbage loopers come in, those are the little white butterflies or the imported cabbage worm. There's two different kinds, but they're different. They're little butterflies that come in and they make the little green worms that get all over your plants. We will cover that with a netting. And I have a net right here. I can actually show it to you. And this is brand new. I've never opened this, but it's tulle fabric. T-U-L-L-E, tool fabric. And this one is 54 inches by 120 feet. So that is, that is, will cover an entire bed out there. So I'm just gonna grab the tape measure and how wide is 54 inches? 54 inches, that is wide. So 54 is four and a half feet. So that will cover, that will cover a whole bed. If the plants get really big, the butterflies may be able to get underneath. So maybe it's not big enough. I may have to have a different um, thing. But this is not a floating row cover that helps frost stay off. This is for hot weather in the summer to keep the butterflies off. It's an insect netting, but it's not made for insects. This is what you put on wedding dresses. But this was, I think this was $13 when I bought it, but I've had it for a couple of years, so the price could have changed. Especially with COVID-19, prices have changed a lot with different uh, products. But this was very cheap compared to a floating row cover or an insect netting, because you can spend a lot of money on insect nettings. Bed number two right now is mostly the cover crop. We will roll that cover crop down when it gets mature and big in the summer, and we will plant it full and it'll be a rotation, because I'll be planting every month, I'll be planting the cabbage, the cauliflower, the broccoli, so that we have a continual rotation. The kale, I have it all planted now. I, I filled up a tray of 100 plants, and they're little cute guys, and they're in the other room, in the south window right now, and I will plant those out there, and then those will just, I'll just pick them, and they'll just grow uh, for the next year. They'll just be growing out there. Um, and we can just harvest as we want those. So that's what bed two is in the Wallapini. Bed three, right now there's just a, men a menagerie of things in bed three, different, there's beets, there's green onions, there's lettuce, um, there's some pea plants, I don't even remember. But it's just stuff that we've had growing. Um, in the summertime there were pepper plants and um, some tomatoes, and I even had a couple of watermelon plants in that row. I know I had some dill in that bed. But that bed, bed number three, it will be harvested out um, around um, March 1st. So sometime in the March 1st area, it will be harvested. And that is where I will put all of my um, onions for this year. All of the, I've tried to do onions here two years outside and they were both crop failures. We did get some onions, but it wasn't enough to be worth the work it was taking to create a good crop. So we were killing ourselves to grow good onions outside. And the ones that I grew in the Wallapini last year did excellent. Therefore, I'm gonna grow the entire crop of onions in there. So half of the bed will be, so about 50 feet, is gonna be the New York storage onion. And the other half of the bed are gonna be the big sweet onions that I saved seed from, from myself, that, that I grew myself. And we already planted those um, in the plug trays, and those are right here. And they have not sprouted yet. We just planted those, and uh, I made a video showing you how to plant those. So that was the first planting of 2022, but the third crop we will harvest in 2022, because the first crop we're going to harvest is the, uh, that we planted was garlic, and we planted that in October, September and October, in the Wallapini. And the uh, next crop was the was the small patch of shallots. Okay, let's move on to uh, bed number four. Bed four and bed five will be cleared out, meaning I'm gonna harvest and eat and sell all of the food in those beds by May 1st. No, it could be early, it could be April 20th, it could be May 15th. But at some point in that May 1st range of the year, 
Those beds will be cleared out. And bed four will be planted. That's the tomato, pepper, and cucumber row. So half of the row is tomatoes. And then a quarter of the row is peppers. And the last quarter of the row will be cucumbers. And that entire row will be trellised. So we will be growing everything vertically. That way nothing's on the ground sprawling out, taking up space. We're going to all grow it straight up because then we can plant the plants much closer. Instead of planting a cucumber five feet apart so they can spread, we put them two feet apart, but then we grow the plants straight up on poles so that, and then we just can pick the cucumbers. But we can grow uh, a lot more cucumbers in the small amount of space. Bed number five, again, cleared out in the May uh, 1st range. And half of that bed, right? so right now, it's um, lettuce, beets, uh, and different kinds of cold crops, cabbages and broccolis. But by May 1st, the cabbages and broccolis will be harvested out of there and we'll eat them. Um, half of that bed, uh, bed five, is uh, the garlic crop. So there's garlic in bed one and bed five. And so where the garlic is now, I will go ahead and harvest everything out except the garlic because there's beets and um, just other greens, different, I think there's spinach, beets, green onions, um, there's uh, some collard plants in there, there's just random things in there, uh, I know there's lettuce, so all that will be harvested uh, uh, around May 1st, except for the garlic, the garlic will still be there, and I will plant the green bean seeds in there, and these are, these are going to be Kentucky blue bean. And they're a pole bean. So I'll put poles in, I'll plant them. The plants will start growing up. Green beans will be thriving and growing. Then the garlic will be ready to harvest and I'll be able to dig each individual um, garlic and just leave the green beans growing in place. So we'll see how that works out, but that is the plan for this year. The second half of bed number five right here is going to be sweet potatoes. I did not grow sweet potatoes successfully last year. I tried a couple of plants and they simply didn't grow. I'm going to do a better job. I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to try to get an entire half of row in bed number five to grow. And that leaves us with bed six to be entirely the salad crops where we're planting once a month and we're harvesting once a month. Um, or, or every day even, but it's just you're always picking, but when a plant gets old you transplant a new one in that you have planted. So that is the plan for the Wallapini uh, greenhouse. We're also going to be putting a lot of herbs in the stone wall so that we have perennial herbs to grow. So that's like thyme, basil, sage, basil's not a perennial, but we can still plant it there. Thyme, basil, sage, uh, rosemary, so just fun culinary herbs. And we may get 10 or 15 in there and maybe some flowers too. So I've done something fun to be able to make this chart work. My monthly planting is right here. And these are the salad greens, okay? My plantings that I'm putting outside are all right here and they're ready to go. This one says 2022 seed planting. This one says 2022 transplanting. So this is when I plant the seeds for all of my crops, my staple crops up here. And this is when I transplant those seeds so I know what to do. Now in this box, here's my uh, seed packet for the Kentucky Blue pole bean. And it says I'm planting them in bed five and I, I'm going to direct seed them. I'm planting a half a bed and I'll plant them around May 1st and I need the full poles installed by May 15th so that they can be growing. I'm going to put the poles in at two feet apart and that'll mean I need a total of 50 poles in that area and I'm going to put two seeds per pole when I plant them and, I, and I've made a note here that I need to save seed from this crop. So we'll eat most of this crop, but I need to save some back because this is the end of my seed. So I know everything I need to do here. So when, uh, when May 1st comes, I don't have to think about what I'm doing. It's all right here. It's done. And that's what I did this December. And I've done that for every single crop. Look at all this. So what is this one? Okay, so this is celery right here. So I have a seed tag right here that's in the bag. 
to put in the tray when I plant the celery seed. And now this one says fall celery. And I'm going to be planting that. It says seed June 1st. Transplant July 15th. And I have another seed tag in there. And that one says spring planting. And it tells me the date when to plant it. So here's my celery seed with all of the instructions written down where I'm going to plant them and where they're going to be transplanted to and when I do those things. So this one is, these are my pumpkin, pumpkin land race and I need to put those in 100 biodegradable pots, two seeds per pot. I seed those on May 1st and I'm going to plant them outside on June 15th. And so, and I put two seeds in every pot and then I just keep them watered and then I just go and I drill the hole with the drill and the auger that you've seen on other videos and then I just put those in the ground and we turn on the sprinkler. And so th this is my land race breeding program. So I have, uh, I think I have six different kinds of pumpkins in here to develop new pumpkins that will grow good in this area. What is this one? This is summer house. So you know how we have the other small greenhouse? These are all the seed packets. So inside this one big packet, I have all these ones. So here's the long neck uh, butternut. And I have the tag ready to go. It's already written, and I know exactly when, when I plant the seed, how I plant it, what pot it goes in, and when I transplant it, and where it goes. The same thing with banana squash. Um, this is the cantaloupe. This is a crunchy cantaloupe. This is a Minnesota midget um, cantaloupe. This is uh, the what I call frosty Indian melon. This is the Delicata squash, the Blue Hubbard squash, and the Acorn squash. So these are all the crops that are going in the summer greenhouse. And I know exactly when to plant them and when to transplant once they come up. So I have done that with every staple crop. Here's my tomatoes and peppers. So in here, I've done the same thing. I have all the tags made right here for all the different varieties and the tags are already written on so all I have to do is get it out and then I get the seed packet out that corresponds with the with each uh, with the same variety so I can stick it in the pot fill the pot the plug tray full of uh, the worm castings put my seed in each one water it and then two weeks later three weeks or five weeks whenever I need to look at the tray and see what needs to happen it says on the tag when I transplant that out into the garden. And so it's all ready to go. Everything here is ready to go. I have an extra chart in here and I put it in a Ziploc bag so that if I'm out working and a sprinkler hits it, it's not ruining what I have, my paper. And so, um, but these are just the, and here I, the same thing. So there's the peppers, here's the tomatoes, and this one is the cucumbers. And so they're all, ready to go and so these ones are the three so those three bags with all the different varieties in them those are all for um what was it bed number three or four yeah tomatoes were bed four so this is for bed number four of what will be growing in the summer and this was all done in December, so now I don't have to think. All I have to know is know what my planting dates are. And so all I have to do is look at the front of this and seed planting. Um, January 4th was onions, and we got the seeds in. February 1st, herbs. March 1st, peppers, tomatoes, and sugar beets. Ha <laughs> ha. And April 20th was when I plant all the summer house bag that we already looked at. So as the dates go on, I just look at this every few days and I think, oh, that's coming up. So in three days, you look at your calendar and then we know what our planting days are. So for to grow everything we need to grow this year, I already know that if it's a salad crop, then it's just three days before every full moon. So I don't even have to think about that. It's just on the calendar. And so that's right here. But everything for the rest of the year, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six days when I plant seeds this year for all of the summer and spring crops. Now I'll have n another planting set for the fall crops and those will be planted in um, August, either July or August, depending what they are. 
but I haven't made that set yet. I'm just, I, we just got done with this spring planting and so we're good. But whatever p follows these, um, we will figure out a map for the fall. But there's plenty of time to do that. And then uh, let's just see what else we have in here. Oh, these are the herbs for the stone wall that I'll be planting. So I have seeds for oregano, garlic chives, creeping thyme, chamomile, yarrow, marjoram, lemon balm, and rosemary. So those aren't all the ones we'll be growing, but those are some of them. And um, this is a, a muskmelon outdoor land race breeding project. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight varieties of cantaloupes that were grown here, they ripened here, and I saved seeds from the very best, the ones that ripened the most, and the ones that tasted the best. And then I just, so I mixed up all the seeds in here, it's not very many seeds, but I just mixed up a few, and then the, I will plant these, and this will um, fill 90 biodegradable pots, and then I'll go out here, and it says on here, um, I'm going to plant, transplant these on June 15th. I'm going to seed these on April 25th. And I'm going to plant these like three feet apart. So I'll drill a hole three feet apart in rows out here in the fields. And I want to grow these outside. I don't want these to adapt to growing inside. I want these to adapt to growing outside. So if we have a cool summer, most of these might die. But if I can get even one cantaloupe to ripen seeds, then we can plant them the next year and it will have worked out genetics so that it can begin to grow in a high altitude um, and a cold climate. So short days, 80 day growing season here on a good year and um, when we're, at, we're approaching 6,000 feet around here. So it's pretty high desert, yeah, high desert and cold. Here's the summer squash and these are for outside planting. So uh, we are doing two seeds per pot and I have crooknecks, patty pans, gray zucchinis, black zucchinis. And I'm putting, um, I'm going to have 80, 80 pots. And we transplant them out on June 15th. They're seeded on April 25th. So there's that one. And this is my outside melon landrace breeding project. And there's some stuff in front of this, but let me just see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight varieties. And if you're truly doing a good land race, you would want to start with a couple of hundred varieties. But these are the eight varieties I have. And all but one of these has grown and ripened in this climate already. So I'm not starting out. I'm starting later on, but I am introducing a couple of varieties together to cross pollinate. So am I creating hybrids? Absolutely, because we are um, creating the hybrid and then we select from those genes for four or five, six years, and then it will stabilize so that it, what it does is it becomes a new open pollinated variety so that you can predict exactly what you're getting each year that you plant it. So after a series of eight years, it, the genetics generally stabilize and then we have selected carefully each year. And so we have a beautiful, beautiful melon that tastes succulent and wonderful that everybody loves. And it's the size that we love. It ripens in this climate uh, because you normally can't grow good melons in this climate. Some of the little tiny icebox ones that don't have that great of flavor. They're okay, but they're not that great. We want greatness. So we're breeding for greatness. And I have one left in here, and this is the onions that were already planted. So these are all of our outside major crops right here. You know, obviously my seed potatoes aren't in here. They're in the root cellar, but the seed potatoes will be going out. And uh, so this year is much simpler. Last year we were dealing with 300 varieties, um, figuring out which ones to plant, which ones did well. And this year we are focusing on the varieties that we have learned about just in the last year from growing stuff last year. We picked the best of the best to go ahead and grow out this year. And we focused on a couple of things. What grows in this climate? What will do great in the Wallapini? What will give us food 365 days of the year? And what we like to eat? 
um, there were certain foods that we didn't really enjoy that much. The fava beans are a great, uh, wonderful plant. Nobody around here really fell in love with them. Um, I eat fava beans, they're okay, but there are other foods I would prefer. Nobody really fell in love with the fava beans. You can eat the flowers, you can eat the uh, new shoots, the leaves, you can eat the green, pea, the green bean pod when it's small, you can eat the big bean pod uh, the, or the bean, you shell them out when they are tender and young and you can let them get old when the bean pod is, looks black and it's starting to rot but inside you can peel each bean and eat the inside of the bean. So there's five edible ways to eat that crop. A wonderful, wonderful crop. And it gets big and it feeds the microbes. It creates a great compost crop so there's all kinds of benefits to that plant. But we chose not to grow it in mass this year as a food crop because nobody really fell in love with it. And there's a lot of other things that we really love. So that's what we're focusing on this year are the things that we really, really love. So this lives right here. And this lives right here. And bed number two. I have another bowl here for bed number two. And if you remember, bed number two is where the we already talked about this, but this is where the cover crop is right now. And these are the, this is the, uh, the kale, the broccoli, the cauliflower, and the cabbage. And there's several different varieties of each of those that we will be planting once a month throughout the year so that we have a continual crop. So some months we'll plant like five broccoli seeds. Um, because we, we're not going to be planting hundreds and hundreds because we only have that one bed that's 100 feet long. So uh, we, we're going to be planting just enough to keep everybody fed. So this is how I organized my uh, crops for this year. And I'm excited about it. We simplified it way down. Last year was about getting the greenhouse built and then it was about seeing what crops would grow here so I grew a very large variety and from growing that I learned what the people here like to eat and I learned what grows good in our climate and so uh, now we're focusing on a much smaller set of plants that we know will do good to feed us and then a set of plants to breed outside to give us a great breeding project. So uh, I, I didn't show you everything we're growing. I'm also going to be growing some grains. I want to grow some different varieties of wheat, some of the ancient wheats. I'm going to be growing barleys. I'm going to be growing different kinds of uh, the oats. So uh, a lot of varieties of some of these great wonderful old grains. And uh, so let's see, and sunflowers, I'm going to be doing sunflowers. Um, anyway, it's going to be a great year. So in early, it's early uh, January right now, and it's exciting because we are getting this all put together. And it's pretty, pretty great. This is pretty exciting, pretty neat. So I talked a lot here. Hopefully you can glean some of the things that I... Um, I'm planning to be able to help you in your own garden. If you have any questions about garden planning, um, feel free to comment and ask questions about this video and I'll try to answer your questions. Put those questions in this uh, video so other people can see them and read them and then it helps our whole community to be able to learn as we uh, learn from each other. Anything else I should say? Thank you so much for being a Patreon member. Share this with your friends and family and let them watch this video.